In 1954, a businessman arrived in Japan on an inbound flight from a country called Tored. It was a place that simply did not exist. After his subsequent and inexplicable disappearance, a new generation of investigators are questioning whether the man from Tored was an interdimensional traveller. The multiverse, a hypothetical state of infinite realities, all existing together at the same time. It was a term first coined by American psychologist William James in 1895, albeit in an entirely different context to the one we know today. He referred to a moral multiverse rather than a physical one, something he called a world of plasticity and indifference. It would take almost 60 years for his contribution to the English language to become mainstream, and only after it was hijacked in 1952 by eminent Austrian physicist Erwin Schrödinger to describe the possibility of alternate universes. Although as off the wall as it was groundbreaking, it was a concept Schrödinger, and other physicists for that matter, had been toying with for many years, and was even lightly touched upon in his now famous thought experiment known as Schrodinger's cat. He hypothesized that throughout a person's life, they may be faced with millions of different choices, which could lead to millions of different outcomes. That each time one of these proverbial crossroads is arrived at, the universe splits into several possible branches based upon the decisions available to the individual at that moment in time. These branches then go on to coexist as separate space-times. Given the amount of life forms on planet Earth, let alone in the universe at large, this would result in the existence of an infinite number of alternate universes. The distance between these universes could be anything from a couple of nanometers to billions of light years, and would in fact be irrelevant, as there is no way they could ever interact with each other. Or is there? Whilst many physicists are still on the fence regarding the possibility that we exist as part of a multiverse, and it is strictly a hypothetical concept, history is littered with accounts of people who have supposedly travelled to alternate realities, or have arrived from them. And one of the most striking examples on record is a case known as the Man from Tored. On a scorching summer's day in July 1954, so the story goes. A passenger airliner touched down at Haneda Airport in Tokyo, Japan, during the late afternoon. The sun was still high overhead as the passengers disembarked. They were mostly Japanese, perhaps returning from holidaying in other parts of the world, but some of them were European. They immediately set about collecting their luggage and made their way through to customs in that rushed and haphazard way only world-weary travellers seemed to exhibit. As far as the airport officials were concerned, it was just another mundane day at the office. However, one passenger in particular had caught their attention. He was a slender, well-dressed European man, carrying a leather-bound briefcase along with his luggage. His primary language was French, although he could also speak Japanese as well as a few other languages and he told officials that he was visiting on business. They had no reason to disbelieve him, he certainly didn't look like a tourist, but when he handed over his passport, things began to take a somewhat bizarre turn. 
He presented to them an official looking document of impeccable condition, which had travel stamps from several other nations, including Japan. What struck them as odd, however, was his country of origin. Proudly emblazoned on his passport in bold lettering, as Tored. None of the officials recognised this name, and whilst they didn't doubt that the document was genuine, they pulled him aside all the same in order to clarify the situation. They took him into a small room and asked to see other forms of identification, which he was only too happy to provide, and sure enough, they established that he was, indeed, a citizen of a country named Tored. He also presented currency, banknotes issued by his homeland, which did not look in any way counterfeit. Based on these findings, they then placed a map of the world on the table in front of him, and asked him to pinpoint the exact location of his country. He proceeded with a smug expression on his face, but as it transpired, it would now be his turn to be confused. He pointed to an area right on the border between France and Spain, where the modern day principality of Andorra is, saying that this is where his homeland should have been. He declared that the Kingdom of Tored was nearly a thousand years old, so there was no way it could not have been on a standard world map. He also claimed that this was his third trip to Japan that year, that he had been making similar trips over the past five years and had never encountered a problem before. The travel stamps in his passport certainly seemed to corroborate this. Nevertheless, when airport officials decided to drill down into the finer details of his story, they discovered that the company he claimed to be visiting had never heard of him. The company he claimed to work for did not exist, and the hotel he was supposed to be staying at had no reservations under his name. His confusion quickly turned to anger, accusing the staff of pulling a practical joke at his expense. Unsurprisingly, he demanded to see government officials at once so that they could clear the matter up. As it turned out, he would be in for a long wait, and since they couldn't detain him in the customs room indefinitely, he was granted a suite on one of the top floors of the airport's hotel. His room was guarded by two immigration officers who were under strict orders not to allow him to leave. He was served a meal and was said to have taken a nap, but when government officials arrived later that evening and knocked on his door, there was no response. Upon entering the room, they found that he was nowhere to be seen. The man from Tored, along with all of his belongings, had simply vanished. The immigration officers on guard duty were firmly rebuked, although they maintained that they had been watching the room all day, and that no one had been in or out except for room service. The only other exit was through a ledgeless window, six stories above the road below. A fall from such a height would have surely killed anyone trying to escape this way. Whilst authorities were left baffled by this strange event, no one has ever seen or heard from this man again, leaving the rest of us to question what happened to him. Who was the man from Tored? Why was there such confusion over his country of origin? And how did he vanish from a guarded room on the sixth floor of a hotel? The pervading opinion amongst fringe theorists is that he was an unwitting interdimensional traveller who came from a reality very similar to our own, albeit with marked differences. During his flight from Tored to Japan, he somehow crossed the bridge into our reality, where his homeland did not even exist, all the while blissfully unaware that anything had changed. And here he stayed for a number of hours, before he was finally pulled back into his own reality at some point during the evening, disappearing from our universe altogether. They surmise that he probably found himself waking up in a different hotel, perhaps the one he had booked before his trip, and looked back on this experience as some kind of strange dream, never quite sure whether it actually happened. He may have reported it at the time, and it may now sit on a few obscure websites in his own reality, just one of hundreds of other strange accounts lost in the ether, believed by advocates of the multiverse theory, but dismissed by skeptics. 
not too dissimilar from what happens in our own reality. For the case of the man from Tored is not unique by any stretch of the imagination. It is apparently a well-travelled phenomenon, which has affected numerous individuals over the course of history, and these are cases we hope to cover in more depth in future episodes. For instance, in 1972, four girls travelling across the Utah-Nevada state line crashed their car into a creek bed after what they described as a terrifying drive through an otherworldly landscape where they were apparently chased off the road by humanoid beings driving egg-shaped vehicles. They relayed their story to an understandably dubious state trooper the next morning, but when authorities checked the scene of the accident, they found that the vehicle was three kilometres off the main highway. Yet its tyre tracks started only 200 metres before the creek bed where they had crashed. How could they have travelled so far over the soft sand of the desert floor and not made any tracks for the majority of that distance. In another case, a woman by the name of Lorena Garcia awoke one morning in 2008 and noticed that subtle changes had been made to her bedroom during the night. Her bedsheets were not the same, her furniture was out of place, and the pyjamas she had on were not the ones she remembered wearing the night before. As the day progressed, things got even weirder. After driving to work, she found that she did not recognise any of her co-workers. Her department was not where it was supposed to be, and her job role was not the one she had been working in for the past 20 years. She returned home later that day to find that her partner was in fact a boyfriend that she had broken up with six months prior, and her new love interest whom she had been dating for a couple of months was nowhere to be seen. Unfortunately for Lorena, she has been stuck here ever since. So what are we to make of these experiences? Could there really be multiple universes? And if so, do people unwittingly travel between them at random? It is a question we have asked before, and is in fact one of the most prominent theories behind the so-called Mandela Effect the possibility that our universe has become conjoined with another, and that our respective histories are now merging in an altogether contradictory fashion. But of course, no theory would be complete without a healthy dose of scepticism, and as far as the most doubtful amongst us are concerned, the man from Tored is nothing more than an urban legend. After all, nobody can trace the origin of the story, the earliest reference is believed to have been published in a 1981 book, The Directory of Possibilities, written by Paul Begg. Begg does not go into any detail regarding the story, it is simply a single line paragraph, presented as a tidbit of truthful information. In fact, the extended version of the story, relayed here, was only traced as far back as 2012, when it appeared on a website called Before Its News written by Terence Aim. Skeptics take this as an obvious sign of fabrication, and question why there are no newspaper articles from the same time period reporting on the incident, but then, one might question whether such an event was even newsworthy. It might have been kept out of the press in order to save both the airport and the Japanese government any embarrassment. And, as we have said numerous times before, you will probably find a kernel of truth in most, if not all, urban legends. In either case, we simply do not know, and the prospect of becoming an unwitting interdimensional traveller is no less harrowing. If true, it's a phenomenon that seems to occur at random, affecting anyone, anywhere, and at any time. Which begs the question, could you be next.